a warm good evening to all our participants and esteemed guests for the evening today. It's another terrific and prolific scientific session for the oral cancer e conclave. We are on day three. In the last two sessions, we covered numerous topics on the early diagnosis and the uh, prognosis behind the disease and how uh, well we can, uh, with, with, a, with a very scientific and terrific um, panel discussion with uh, Dr. Anil D. Cruz. Today, again, we are here to have a wonderful discussion on uh, the, uh, uh, the locally advanced oral cancers. And this is the theme for uh, today's session. And we are going to have a lot of uh, discussions and a lot of learnings from our uh, extraordinary oncosurgeons who have joined us from across the country. I uh, thank all the participating organizations and the representatives who are here with us today and have made the event really successful so far. And I hope that all of us are going to really enjoy and learn a lot of uh, things from our panelists. With this now, I, uh, without taking much time, I'll invite uh, Dr. Vikram uh, Kekatpurisan. He is the uh, Secretary of Foundation for Head and Neck Oncology, and he's also currently Senior Consultant, Director of Head and Neck Oncology, and Director of Tissue Repository Program at Cytocare Cancer Hospital, Bangalore. I invite, sir, to take the scientific sessions ahead. Thank you. Welcome all to the day three of this conclave. Um, uh, it has been really very exciting two days and I'm sure the third day is going to be even more exciting mainly because it deals with the advanced cancers which forms bulk of our uh, disease which we commonly see in uh, our practice and we have a very great lineup of uh, faculty today and we hope that it will generate a lot of excitement and discussion. We're moving on to another important topic, another challenging topic, I must say, is how to manage advanced tongue cancer. And uh, to moderate this session, let me invite uh, Dr. Krishnakan, who is consultant in nuclear medicine at Sterling Cancer Hospital. Our speaker, uh, Dr. Alok Thakkar, who is the uh, president of uh, Foundation for Head and Neck Oncology and chairperson, Dr. Pranav. Over to you, uh, Dr. Krishnakar. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm very privileged to uh, <clears throat> invite uh, for this uh, for this uh, topic uh, for the chair this session, Dr. Pranav Yogesh Chandrana. He's reader at the Department of Orthodontics, MPDC Dental College, Vadodara. He's uh, faculty for online uh, hypnotherapy course at Charusat University. He's also principal convener for Gujarat Orthodontic Study Group. He's also chairman of council on Dental Health IDA Gujarat State and Central Council Member of IDA HO. Uh, warm welcome, sir. And I also uh, <coughs> welcome Dr. Alok Thakkar, sir. Uh, he's President Foundation for Head and Neck Oncology. He's Consultant Surgeon and Professor at Ames, New Delhi. Uh, he's Fellow Neuro-Otology and Skull-Based Surgery at Entry University Hospital, North Mercy, DNR. And um, uh, I invite Dr. Alok Thakkar, sir, for uh, pursue this session. So thank you, Dr. Krishnakan. Oral cancer tends to be uh, sort of clumped together as one cancer when you look at the staging system and when you uh, look at most chapters and textbooks and things of that sort. But of course, uh, all of us know that this is a mixed bag with very different cancers. Uh, ranging from the lip to the buccal mucosa to the alveolus uh, to the tongue. And uh, as Nirav alluded to, uh, it is a truism that uh, tongue cancers don't quite do as well as uh, gingival buccal cancers tend to do. And this is something that is not uh, fully recognized. What you see out here is data that has come out of our center. And uh, what you see in red is the results that you see from tongue floor of mouth cancers. These are predominantly tongue, 95% tongue. And uh, what you see from gingival buccal cancers. And you see that both in terms of overall survival and disease-free survival for both early stage as shown above and uh, advanced stage three and four as seen below, you can see a clear distinction in, uh, in terms of uh, survival and disease-free survival uh, for uh, tongue cancers, which are which are doing a little bit worse than the gingival buccal cancers. Why is this so? Well, is it because there are more lymph nodes? We are all very well aware of Dr. Dikos's paper, which told us that occult lymph nodes are the major cause of uh, mortality and morbidity if left untreated uh, uh, initially you know, for tongue cancers. Uh, so there is poorer local control. There is increased neck metastasis, and perhaps these are more aggressive tumors. 
But this is something else that again came out from our center, which was with regard to what we can expect in terms of local aggressiveness as assessed by the Brandwein Gensler histological risk score, the BG score, as it's commonly talked about, and it is applied to many cancers, has been applied to oral cancer. So this looks at the pattern of invasion uh, of the of the tumor in terms of whether there's a pushing margin, as you see here, or a or a more variegated margin with with skip with skip lesions uh, in the in the tumor, or whether you see a clear lymphocytic infiltrate indicating to good host tumor response, or whether you see a very sparse lymphocytic infiltrate, and also with regard to perineural infiltration. So you put these three things together and come up with a histological score, which tries to look at the histological risk of or, or aggressiveness of the tumor. And uh, when you look at it from this point of view, in our data set, you could see that some were low risk, some intermediate risk, and some high risk. And a clear demarcation can achieve in terms of what, uh, in terms of prognosis, again, in terms of OS and DFS. So, so aggressive tumors uh, would do less well in terms of survival and disease-free control. And not surprisingly, when you look again at our data, then group one tumors, which are the tongue and floor of mouth cancers, are rarely low risk, usually intermediate risk or high risk. And when you look at the other group of tumors, which are the gingival buccal group of tumors, that is a little bit different. And you have a greater number of low risk and intermediate risk tumors. So basically to say that these are more aggressive tumors locally and in terms of histology that you see out there, and their survival can be a little bit compromised compared to what you expect with gingival buccal cancers. How do you treat these tumors? Of course, when you look at advanced tumors, you're generally looking at combined treatment, which may be chemo therapy or surgery followed by radiation. If you look at the guidelines that come out from the West and from here, then uh, for advanced tumors or advanced resectable tumors, surgery is generally the first line of treatment that is advocated. And uh, it is also a truism that for almost every patient, even if there are no adverse features after you do the resection, you would need to do radiation for these patients. And of course, if there are adverse features, you would need to look in terms of further treatment with chemo radiation or more aggressive uh, treatments. These are some of the Indian guidelines that have come out. I would uh, encourage you to go through these because these are easily available, accessible, and a little bit more detailed than what you see on the NCCN guidelines also more relevant to what you do. And what you will follow, uh, what, what I follow on in this talk is really an amalgamation of what comes through on the American and the Indian guidelines. So how do we end up treating T4A tumors and what is the evidence we have with us? I think everybody is generally agreeable that surgery followed by post-op RT is the generally advocated treatment. Though there continue to be centers which, uh, which look at primary radiation or primary chemo radiation as the first line of treatment. This analysis is probably the best uh, evidence that exists at this moment. It's not quite an RCT, but it's a propensity score, which basically means that you match the two groups in the retrospective analysis. And after a appropriate propensity score matching, what you find out there is that surgery plus post op RT scores over chemo radiation by a significant uh, amount. And this is, of course, a very large data set from the National Cancer Database in the US. And you can see that surgery plus post RT does so much better than chemo radiation alone. There was one RCT which was set up in Singapore for this, could never be completed because it didn't accrue enough. And this is a subset of oral cavity as to what it showed. This is a very small data set because I said this trial was never completed. But nevertheless, it's clear enough to see that surgery and radiation do significantly better than chemo radiation. So this is just to say that surgery plus RT should be the standard treatment for all oral cavity and especially tongue cancers. If you go ahead with chemo radiation, then it's not that you can't get uh, a cure in some situations, but yes, uh, not only is the cure compromised, but the incidence of complications is fairly, fairly high. And this is one of the larger series that has come out with chemo radiation in the recent, uh, in the recent literature, which tells you that even today, you can anticipate a fair degree of osteoradionecrosis if these patients are treated with radiation. Surgery, however, if pushed to the limit, uh, can also be, uh, be very morbid. And there is no clear clarity on what the limit is, where, how far you should push and not push. And I think Neeraj there had very 
clear concepts where any mention that it's always with the discussion with the patient as to how far you need to go but uh, if you do very aggressive surgery in p4b kind of advanced disease that is total prostatectomy total prostatectomy with free flap reconstruction or something then you would get significant morbidity both in terms of feeding and in terms of speech and this is synopsized here where in they have found the feeding tube dependence in 24% and means single word intelligibility in only 44% what is the role of neoadjuvant chemo i'm not going to spend too much time on it except to say that the literature does not support this phase strongly as a routine practice for everybody um and there is of course some talk of using this not for 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 the routine patient but only for the patient who is uh, who is not clearly amenable to treatment with 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 uh, surgery as is usually undertaken and uh, if you have a patient who is otherwise unresectable and cannot be take cannot be taken up for surgery and radiation as uh, is standard treatment then you could look at this data which comes out from tmh which looks at giving these patients two or three drug regime in terms of new adjuvant chemotherapy and then selecting patients who may be amenable to surgery however it needs to be seen that even if there is response to surgery which is not a very great response rate response rates are in the range of 25% in this data set even then the two year local regional control is no more than 20% overall nevertheless sometimes worth pursuing i come down to surgery itself just like neeraj has talked about compartmental resection for gingival buccal cancers one can undertake compartmental resection for tongue cancers it's not uh, so widely talked about but the basic concept is that you include all tissue right from the periosteum of the mandible to the midline septum of the of the of the tongue and all an entire hemitongue is removed in its entire thickness down to the myeloid muscle and posteriorly till the hyoid and including the the muscle in the base tongue area this to my mind has made the most remarkable difference in terms of survival and uh, this data comes from italy and uh, though there is not yet wide acceptance of this uh, concept in tongue cancers nevertheless one can see that uh, the difference in terms of local control local regional control and over overall survival is very significant when you uh, when you undertake these procedures comp uh, compared to the standard or wide local resection and what this data set tells you that you can expect an overall survival improvement in 27% just by converting your surgical operation from a wide local resection to a compartmental resection of course there is fear of greater morbidity by doing this operation but there is significant uh, theoretical reasons for doing this one is that this is one compartment and the general standard of doing muscle of resection soft tissue resections in other parts of the body in the limb and such is to do compartmental resections which are bounded by fascia and the tongue deserves a similar treatment uh, it is uh, feared that tongue cancer may 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 spread more within the muscle bundles of the tongue because of the constant movement that occurs in this um in this uh, organ and the and the constant movement of the tongue may actually be milking tumor along the muscle fibers to far greater distances that may occur with more static uh, organs and also there is some worry that uh, there are intra lingual lymph nodes which exist and these may actually be harboring tumor so on the basis of these theoretical considerations one may consider a compartmental resection we have recently changed our uh, practice to To, to move towards compartmental resections from wide local resections i can't say that our results are out through yet in terms of oncological outcome but i just gave you the reasons as to why we believe that this might be the way forward so uh, this is a usual resection which comes from the tip right down to the hyoid and includes the hyoglossus muscle the genioglossus muscle the styloglossus muscle and the palatoglossus muscle and that is the entire tumor including the anterior two thirds and also the muscle of the posterior one third uh, tongue which is all one muscle uh, included in one resection the standard uh, practice for us is to usually use the infrared flap for reconstruction of the floor of mouth and for filling the, the the defect that is so created but of course there are times when we use more uh, aggressive and bigger flaps both free flaps and pedicle 
um, and the experience in terms of both uh, in terms of mobility hasn't been quite that uh, fearsome. It's an operation which can be easily delivered. It's an operation which is uh, uh, reliably and where functional results can be anticipated to be quite within limits. This is the uh, this is the fees which we tend to undertake at about the seventh to tenth post up day when it's time to remove the nasogastric tube. And what you can see out here is that though there is obviously some swallowing dysfunction initially, uh, it is uh, not usual to have any aspiration at all in these situations. So an operation which can be delivered safely, um, which offers potential for improved uh, local regional control. And this is the same data set I showed you at the start of the presentation, wherein I indicated to you that tongue cancers may do a little bit worse than gingival cancers. And as per this data set, one can expect a bit standard white local excision followed by radiation or chemo radiation as appropriate. A survival of in the range of 50% at three years and the local region control in the range of 40% at three years. We are hoping that with compartmental resection, we might be able to push this beyond because this obviously is not as good as one would like. What about the very advanced tumors? Uh, well, that's an entirely different topic, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Just to say that uh, therapy in this situation uh, depends more on the performance status of the patient than on the exact status of the disease. And if the patient is well preserved and has good performance status and willing for aggressive treatment, then of course, concurrent chemo radiation or induction chemotherapy, as I said previously, are both on. We will hear more about induction chemotherapy in the next talk. If the patient is not all that great in terms of performance status, then one can of course look at, um, at doing less aggressive treatment in terms of radiation alone or in terms of palliative radiation or best supportive care. So to summarize, uh, there is overwhelming evidence that surgery plus adjuvant radiation or chemo radiation is the best treatment whenever feasible. And also there is evidence out there to say that tongue cancers are histologically aggressive and prone for intracompartmental spread. Uh, there is promise in, uh, in, in looking at compartmental resection as the surgical uh, strategy for these patients uh, rather than wide local resection. And uh, of course, there are unresectable and inoperable situations because of very extensive disease uh, and technical unresectability. But you can also think in terms of unresectability or inoperability because of poor expectation of cure on unacceptable morbidity. And these are uh, sometimes difficult decisions. Uh, we did discuss how to move forward with unresectable and inoperable situations. And I'm sure you will hear more about that uh, in the next talk. So thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Now the session is open for discussion. And I, in between, I also invite Dr. Pranav Yogesh Chandrana, sir, uh, for their concluding remarks. Dr. Thank Pranav. you very much, uh, Dr. Krishnakant. And uh, I, on the outset, would uh, like to thank uh, team uh, I Can Care, and especially Reena Ma'am, for uh, deeming me this privilege of uh, chairing uh, the session of uh, none other than Dr. Alok Thakur, sir, who has had a uh, very illustrious, uh, uh, you know, work as a oncologist, surgical oncologist, I would say. And uh, I'm uh, definitely uh, considering this opportunity to share the very fact that oral cancer has been a very big challenge for India, bigger than what we are currently facing in this uh, pandemic. And uh, India is undoubtedly the oral cancer capital of the world. And I must congratulate the I Can Care team and the FHNO Association for bringing all the stakeholders associated with oral cancer on this one platform nationally and making it a you know, memorable event for all of us to learn how in a multidisciplinary approach with various uh, specialties we can uh, effectively help our oral cancer patients. And with regards to uh, Alok sir's uh, presentation, I am sure uh, oral cancer of the tongue and the advanced conditions is one of the very uh, scary uh, situations. And he has very uh, rightly delineated that surgical aspect along with certain combination therapies is the treatment of choice. And I have seen very few cases wherein, uh, you know, a complete glossectomy was done and the rehabilitation Post that is also one of the very important ones. And uh, 
i once again congratulate the entire uh, team organizing this uh, e conclave it has been a wonderful experience the three sessions that i have attended so far and look forward to the last one next sunday thank you very much thanks a lot sir uh, and thanks a lot uh, alok sir